back to Poetry Lockdown. We're at day 136. I'm really excited about today's poet, Leighton Osman. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. If I'm not, please forgive me, poet. Um, and I thought, uh, bef before I, I dive into the poem itself, which um, is stunning, and I think you're going to love, um, I want to read two quotes uh, from Emily Dickinson that I feel like really fit uh, this poem, at least my experience of this poem. Um, the first, I think I've mentioned before in one of these videos, uh, Emily Dickinson, she says about a, a poem that really moves her. She says, if I feel physically as if the top of my head were taken off, I know that is poetry. Love that. Um, that's terrific. And definitely this this poem did that for me. And also, there's another thing that, that, that this poem did for me. Um, and it's sort of childlike wonder and awe, especially the first part of the poem. And that is um, something that happens in, in this poem. I don't know if you ever read uh, I Felt a Funeral in My Brain. I'd really recommend it if you haven't. Uh, it's a, uh, a great poem by Emily Dickinson. But at the, at the end of that poem, she says in the poem, Then a plank in reason broke, and I dropped down and down and hit a world at every plunge and finished knowing then. And that sense of free fall, of, of really being free from reason, but open to a deeper truth, to me also fits this poem. So you're pretty select company there, Leighton Osman, uh, as, as terms of poets that I love and admire. So great work for this poem. Um, so it's called The Key. Um, and I'll just jump right into reading it then. The Key by Leighton Osman. I was under the kitchen table, guessing who was at the sink by how they used water when I heard my mother say to my father, what about this job? That one, those people, did they call? And my father said, everyone says no. I see all the doors, but none of them will open. My mother said, maybe we just haven't found the right key. I'll go look for it. They laughed for a long time. Their toes looked at each other. Maybe they forgot the bag of keys in the crooked mouth dresser. I lined up the keys on a windowsill, metal on metal on my fingers until they smelled like missing teeth. I looked at the best one, large cursive F a scarlet ribbon tied to it. It had two teeth, like my baby sister. I tried the little door behind the community center, then the big kid's door at my school. The shed of a house with a backyard so large the family could never see me. I got grass and sand and an ignorant pebble in my shoe. Dust climbed up my pants so I could spit spell my name on my leg when resting. I went back to our neighborhood. There was a black cloud over it, while the nice neighborhood down the hill shone. A girl said, our house was darkest, and the first raindrops fell on it because we're all going to hell. When I told my father, he said it was isolated or separated storms. So it was true. We were set apart for a punishment. The next day, dozens of dead flying ants covered our patio. I took all the keys and tried all the doors in the abandoned mall. One unlocked. It was a room with white walls, floor, ceiling, white squares of wood, flat or leaning in every corner. The door closed behind me and no key would work. Maybe the room would swallow me and I'd get invisible if I didn't stop streaming. But then a surprised guy, white, wearing white, opened the door. I wanted to try one more time, but my keys disappeared and everyone said they were never real. That was The Key by Leighton Osman. Wow, <laughs> what a poem. Um, 
so one of the reasons that I mentioned that line, that that Dickinson quote, and I'll just read it one more time, the, the, the conclusion to, I felt the funeral in my brain, a plank and reason broke and I dropped down and down and hit a world at every plunge, is because I, I think part of the genius of this poem is its ability to give us the child's authentic voice and sight, right? Right from the beginning under the kitchen table and just sort of this wonderment like, where are those keys? Let me find those keys. And just there's this beautiful funny at times comical start to the poem with child sight and child wonder and then we get this really harsh reality of what i think is i think the poet is trying to communicate of, of like structural racism systemic racism with that that you know horrible truth of this uh this um this girl who says let me make sure i'm saying it a girl said our house was darkest this, po this poet is Somali-American. I think that's significant to, to note. And the first raindrops fell on it because we're all going to hell. So all of a sudden, like, she hears these things, and then she, and then she's like, but then the father confirms that he doesn't know it, but he's the, uh, it was an isolated or separated storms. And so the child says, it's true. We were set apart for a punishment. There's this this horrible spiritual, like, truth that the, the the little child is is encountering with the racism of the, the little girl and then her father saying that thing and it's like oh my goodness um it's it's a it's an understanding or an insight beyond reason and it's it's horrific and horrible um and and the poem has kind of that that double double vision of of the child like wonder and innocence which is beautiful and then the the heredity of this world in which he's grown up in um, and so both of those things, I think, combine to make this poem uh, incredibly moving and hard to read at times as well um, from the sense of, you know, just like just uh, if you are at all empathic and sense sensitive, like it's it's hard to read that. So it's beautifully done. Um, I don't want to say too much more about it because I want you to experience it for yourself. And Lord knows I, I could be interpreting this incorrectly. Um at any rate, uh, Leighton Osman, thank you for this incredible poem. It, it's it's beautiful. It's been in my head and heart for you know the last month or two since I read it. And also just want to uh, um, note that it is part of a collection, um, which I'm just starting to read, The Kitchen Dweller's Testimony, and that the same poet has also written another collection recently, Exiles of Eden, both of which I'm really interested in, in diving into more. So Check Layden Osman out. Um, thanks for tuning in, y'all. Hope you have a good rest of your day.